Hey everyone, this is Sonia Holt, your CFWC Communications Chairman, and welcome to today's workshop. We're doing a Back to Basics series. Today in July, we're going to be talking about keeping parliamentarian procedures. So welcome, we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, July Back to Basics Parliamentary uh, Learning How to Do Parliamentary Better. So we are going to start out today with a welcome from the board members in the room. And we have our first vice president, Barbara Biley Beard. Barbara? Just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here. Parliamentary law is important, which we all know. And Valerie is going to give us an up to date so that we can run our meetings properly and the way that they should be done. So thank you all for being here and we'll have a lot of fun over the next hour and a half. Thank you, Barbara. The next person is uh, Sonia Matisse. Sonia, our second vice president. Well, it's wonderful that so many of you have been able to join us. I think the count was 65. I think that's fantastic. There's so much to learn. I'm learning every day, so I'm, I'm just pleased that, that you could attend it and learn from this, from our Valerie. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sonia. So welcome everyone. We're so glad that you're here. Debbie is going to be helping me as my teammate and my Zoom chairman. She's going to be running the chat room and she's also going to be running, uh, letting people in and out muting and helping me with all of that. So thank you, Debbie, for being here today. Um, just to go over some housekeeping, if everyone could mute, we'd really appreciate that. Or Debbie, can you mute everybody except for me, unless you want me to wait for a second? You'll need to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you, Debbie. Um, thank you. Again, let's do some housekeeping, okay? So first of all, welcome. Today's format is all about parliamentary law. So these are those kind of things that we need to know going into that meeting. Um, due to the format today, we're asking that you do not share and um, that you are welcome to ask one question, get back into line and ask a second question, get back into line and ask a third question and so on and so on. Um, mute, please don't break in. Um, it's really important that we have a certain way that we run the meeting and because when everyone unmutes and just starts yelling, we don't know who you are and we can't really help you with answering your question when it's that kind of a response. So we ask that you mute and then raise your hand. Um, to mute or unmute, you wanna take your mouse and go to the bottom left-hand side of your screen and there's something that just says mute. It's a little mic on the bottom and you can just literally push or unpush that or you can take your mouse and roll it over your particular square, go to the three dots and you can mute or unmute there. Um, so let's talk about stop your video and why that's important. Let's say that your dog comes running in and he has a rabbit in his mouth, right? Or there, your son comes in and he needs to ask you a question or your husband runs through and wants to give you a piece of coffee, um, coffee cake or something and you need a minute just to do what you need to do. Please don't worry about that. Because this is being recorded today, we want you to know how to do this so that your personal life can stay personal. So you wanna to go to the bottom left-hand side of your screen and where it says stop video, go ahead and practice. You can turn it off and turn it on anytime that you need that minute and you will not be recording what you don't want to be recorded. So that kind of leads us into the next um, housekeeping. I, we want you to know that these meetings are recorded and they are being edited it's a little bit here and there, but they are going to end up on YouTube. So when we ask you not to share your name, your telephone number, your club's name, or your club's telephone number or address, it's because we're putting it on a public forum. So if you have those kind of questions, we request that you send those to us in an email. And raising your hand. Okay, so this is important to us because we want to know that you know how to participate. So go to the bottom of your screen and there's a reactions button and let's all practice. And then if you cannot raise your hand, please put your question into chat and Debbie will be raising her hand and telling us your question for your response. Very good, everyone. So if you have an iPad, let's say you want to raise your hand, um, if you tap on the screen, you'll get a participant's icon that kind of looks like a group of three people. 
And then on the bottom of that box, you'll see a blue hand. And if you tap on that hand, you'll appear in the lineup with everybody else. So you have a three choices today. So very good. I'm so glad. Is anyone still not able to participate that we need to watch for a hand wave? And Debbie can do that with us. Okay, so Allison cannot uh, raise her hand, Debbie. Anyone else, my friends? Uh, we have another one on the bottom. It's a phone, an iPhone. It's um, Joy's iPhone cannot raise her hand. And uh, let's see, anybody else in the room? Okay, so just I'm trying, go ahead. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, oh, trying to move them so that I'll be able to see them. I'm going to lower. Okay, Allison Fantastic. and who, who else? Um, it's Joy's iPhone. Okay. Need to find Fantastic. It. It's important to us that you can ask a question or you can get your, you can communicate with us. All right. So then the next one is renaming. It's important that when you're in a meeting, everyone knows who you are. And when you go to your square, you can highlight your square, go to the three little dots, go down to rename. And what you want to do for your credentials team at all times is put the name that you, the title that you hold in that particular meeting. So when I'm in this meeting, I'm CFWC Communications Chairman. But when I'm in my VISTA Zoom, I'm the Women's Club of VISTA President so that everyone in the room can address you with the title that you deserve. I hope that makes sense. Okay, the next is view. You take your mouse, you go all the way to the top right-hand side of your screen and it's the tiniest little word on the entire screen. And you have two options. You have a gallery view where you see everyone or you have a speaker view, which will be the person speaking. Um, when a speaker is speaking, we do something called spotlight and we highlight the speaker for you so that it doesn't bounce in case someone accidentally comes in the room with the speaker open. Um, okay, so that kind of leads us to the next one. Let's say you wanna learn how to spotlight. You wanna learn how to do Dropbox. Your Zoom isn't working. The photo isn't working with your new update. You have no idea why it's not working, but you're frustrated. So the communications team on Sundays, we do a help desk and it's put up on the Facebook page on Saturday afternoon, what time it is, who's working it and what the Zoom codes are. You are welcome to bring any kind of question that you want in there. Um, this last Sunday, we did some learning on how to do an event in, in Facebook for six weeks. And it was a really good learning session. I appreciate you guys coming and learning with me. So if, to, if you do not do Facebook and you want to come to that help session, a great way to communicate with us is through the communications email. And that is CFWC communications, plural, at gmail.com. And you guys are welcome to send any kind of question you want to in there. And we'll send it to the person that gets that email. And we clean it out about three times a week so that you know. Okay. And with that, we are ready to start. Um, and we have our speaker today is our CFWC parliamentarian and one of my all time favorite people in the world, um, Valerie. I lost you in the number of people that are here. I apologize. I have to go find her. I apologize. You guys. Use, the use the participants list. I am. Mary Prayer, can you please mute yourself? Debbie, do you see her? Can you? Who? Valerie? Valerie? You want me to spotlight her? Yes, please. There she is. Hi, Valerie. Welcome so much. And thank you for being here today. Oh, good afternoon. You know, I'm curious to wonder. How many of you are parliamentarians at the current time? You are either a club parliamentarian, maybe a district, um, other clubs, other organizations. But, um, you know, or maybe you would like to be a parliamentarian and you don't know what it takes. I think it really just takes the ability to want to do it to understand how important it is that we have parliamentary procedure. Um, 
I think the first thing everybody has to think about is uh, where are your club's bylaws? And don't ask me which set, because I hope you only have one set of bylaws. So how, what kind of access do your members have to those bylaws? Are they available to them frequently um, or in easy form? For example, I don't know of too many clubs that don't have a yearbook. Something you print every single year. And um, are your bylaws in there? Are your current up-to-date bylaws with all changes that have been made and that are prescribed in those bylaws, are they available to the members? I got one answer that somebody wrote to me, it costs too much money to reprint them. But it is far worse not to have your members aware of what's going on in the club. You know, there, there's a general purpose of good parliamentary procedure. And the simple thing is it teaches us to work together, allows us all to work together, and really encourages each person to speak up with their feelings at the meeting, their opinions on matters. And we want to be sure we protect the minority as well as the majority in a club. Um, you know, I think the most important uh, part of our, of our organization is our business meeting. That is where we make all our plans. That's where we have our discussions on our projects. But those business meetings have got to be efficiently run. There's nobody sitting in this room right now that has an abundance of free time. And we don't want to waste it on a meaningless meeting. We want to know what time the meeting is going to start. When is it going to be called to order? What is our business? And basically, you're always going to hear me say, when are we going to get the food? Because I do believe if you invite them and serve them lunch, they'll be there. Um, or dinner, or tea, or anything, you know, whatever your, your community likes. But how do you organize that meeting? using a good format and my lord there's got to be how many publications that can give you a sample agenda but more importantly what it's just the traditions within your area do you start your meeting at say 10 o'clock but you have a gathering time of, of 9 30. You're allowing everybody to get in and be seated and get ready to go. That agenda has been worked out. It is on the table for everybody to see, copies for everybody. Most important, your parliamentarian and your secretary need a full scripted agenda because it is a lot easier to record the minutes and the proceedings in that manner. Also, it affords the parliamentarian and the president to have gone over any little wrinkles they might have. One of the important things I think before you ever get to that is, do, is your parliamentarian and president communicating with one another? Are you playing out the various things that happen in a meeting? Do we get all shook up because somebody amends the motion? And then we want to know what do we do? What steps do we take? Communicate between the parliamentarian and the president on how those things are going to be handled. Use a little bit of your board times maybe with a little role playing. You know, what if? 
you know, we all know you, you make the motion, you have a discussion, somebody then amends it, then you have to vote on the amendment after you discuss it. And if it passes, then you vote on the whole mo motion. And that all comes with practice. I guarantee you, your club isn't going to fail if you forget one of those steps. But it sure would be nice if it's well practiced and planned out. One of the things I see in most clubs that I have the privilege of being at is the approval of the minutes. Now, the minutes may be mail, they may be, you know, any number of manner that you use to disseminate that information to your member. Just keep doing it in an organized manner. And then the secretary may ask for the approval of the minutes. Now I hear the secretary ask or the president ask. Plan it out how your club does it. Uh, you you have a set formula for we how we open the meeting, how you do your opening ceremonies. Then it's usually your approval of the minutes and then the financial reports. Remember, you're never approving a financial report; you're accepting the report. Um, I think the question I was asked like a week or so after this term began somebody called me person is sitting here today and asked me how can we tell if a member is in good standing and the answer is so super simple did she pay her dues or did that person not she did that person pay her dues that's a member in good standing. We don't have a test. We don't have any uh, methods of voting or anything. How does she become a member in good standing? She fulfills her obligation by paying her dues. In California, that's $4 to California and $15 to GFWC. And it's one whopping big check written to GFWC come February 10th. I never thought I could ever approve that large of an amount of money, but it, it got done. Um, Annie, how are we doing for questions? Do we have anything so far? We do not have any questions, but we haven't asked. Does anyone have any questions to start the meeting out today? Valerie, there are no questions on the floor. Right. Oh, wait, there is one. Linda Kuntz has a question. Linda? Yep. Hi, Hi Valerie. Um, with what you just said in regards to a member being in good standing um, as long as they pay their dues. So I'm assuming that if a club has in their bylaws that a member is in good standing if she da 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 uh, attends like nine out of 10 meetings or, and pays her dues and a couple of other things, works at the major fundraising project, um, then is it your advice that that bylaw not be part of our club bylaws because a member in good standing is in good standing only by paying her dues? Okay, Linda, I, am, I understand what, where you're going. I come from a very different place. The most important thing to me is that member is part of our group. Why do you want to make it as difficult or as involved as throwing all these other things? I think it's so important to me to see the, uh, the, the way we can allow people to come in and give of themselves whatever they can give. Some of us have 10 hours a day for service. 
some of us have one hour a week. And I think what we want to do is encourage and strengthen the whole organization instead of, I know it's important how they service in projects or it's important how many times they can serve tea or whatever. But my goal is the member. And that member is in good standing when she pays her dues. Thank you, Linda. Okay, thank you. Our next question comes from Wendy Curran. Wendy. Thank you, uh, Sonia. Uh, Madam Parliamentarian, with respect to approval of the minutes, uh, sometimes I think people get, uh, they get lost in the idea that something that was in the minutes from the, mo the month before actually got changed, but they forget that the minutes that were taken that day, that reflected the information. Yes. And then the next minutes would reflect a change. But many times I will hear at either a board meeting or a regular meeting, well, wait a minute, it's not costing us, you know, $50 a person. And, but at the time, that's what was in there. So I often caution people, remember what went on at the meeting and that's what you're approving, not what is the current, yes. uh, you know. And so sometimes as president, you have to make that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having vertigo, so I'm having trouble speaking. But uh, sometimes as president, you have to remind the members at that time, we're approving the minutes as recorded on that previous date. Thank you, Madam President, Madam Parliament. Thank you, Thank Wendy. You, Wendy. Uh, that's very true. Your minutes are a recording of the action taken on that particular time. You know, and I, I understand because uh, that is one of the biggies. Um, on the approval of the minutes, I think I get most frustrated when I do get remarks from uh, secretaries out there. Um, you are approving, you know, is this a true statement? Is this what really happened at that meeting? I personally believe minutes have to be long enough to cover the point and no longer. But I don't measure um, the secretary by the length of her minutes. I'm more interested in the history of the club on that day is preserved. Uh, we, uh, come up with a very serious problem right now about our minutes. It's very expensive to keep old files. We, you know, in my office here, there are, yes, I have file cabinets. I have eight of them in here. And, you know, people give judging now, should you have file cabinets? Well, where else are you going to keep that many years of minutes. Well, we turned down the uh, adequate storage of minutes in other forms because it was those forms changed and people weren't keeping current with how to update and how to keep them. Well, I think we have to revisit that because as clubs, we cannot afford the storage. And we should have other ways of recording those minutes or of storing the uh, re recordings of those minutes and have ways to keep it current. I know there are many of us sitting here with, uh, with their kids' graduations and weddings on formats that we can't view in our own house. There's five children's weddings in my house that I can't look at them because they're old you know, VCR tapes or whatever. 
but that's what we're going to have to be faced with our minutes to keep them up, uh, in formats that we can have that record that that history is preserved yeah I, you have several questions on the floor yeah. valerie uh you have the alameda district parliamentarian is it gloria gloria yes, yes. thank yes. you uh, well, Madam uh, Parliamentarian, when a minute, uh, when a minute from a previous meeting that is read in the new meeting, and there are corrections and additions, uh, once that done, do we say approved as as corrected or? Yeah, it could be. It's approved as as corrected or as proved as presented if there were no corrections. And who said that, the president? Um, I think that comes to where you and your secretary, how you're seated, how your table goes. You know, it's all good to talk about the podium and everything, but not very many have a podium. You know, how many have certain types? Maybe you're all at one round table. Make it something that is meaningful within your meeting and who's going to do it every time. Thank you. Our next question comes from Connie Burgess. Connie. Thank you, uh, Madam Parliamentarian. Um, I have a, a question and a comment. Um, the question is, is there a length of retention, record retention uh, that is recommended? On minutes, on yes, minutes. there's a length. It's called forever. Forever. Uh, and then my second uh, is a comment. When uh, I'm hearing about corrections, wouldn't it be proper to um, make a note of what that correction? And if, if it's a typo, it's it's okay. But if it's a uh, you know it was supposed to be three hundred and fifty dollars, not fifty dollars and for something that the correction was made that this was $350. And then that be noted in the minutes as the correction. That is, to me, it's noted in the current minutes where you're doing the approval. Yes. But I would also ask that, to, and I'm sure I've been a secretary, uh, I'd also go back to those old minutes and put a note in the margin. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Connie. That's all the questions you have for right now. Okay. Um, I think um, one, one of the, I'm going to tell you two places I really did a lot of research. Number one, I think a federation at a glance is one of our, one of our Bibles. We have members that we would like to see, you know, move up into those leadership roles. And many times they might be a little bit afraid because of parliamentary procedure. I don't really think General Roberts meant to be this big mystery guy, but it's what he's, what people are forcing him to. Um, I don't, I'm worried about seeing our leaders, our future leaders be afraid to pro proceed uh, up the roles of leadership because of parliamentary procedure. Have we made it, you know, this big uh, mystery? Uh, are we afraid uh, that we can make a mistake? You know, uh, it, it is, it's simple. How do you get this to your membership? Well, I've, I've been, a, a, you know, around some very good parliamentarians, but I guarantee you when they start a meeting out with wanting to give you a class on parliamentary law, they walked out the door. Be realistic, it's not, the subject that you want to, uh, but what we really want to do is, is is train our members so that they'll feel competent, and they're going to then accept our leadership positions. Um, 
They're going to protect the rights of all members, allow the minority as well as the majority to be heard, governed by the majority. Um, welcoming discussion. Yes, I have sat at a meeting where we discussed for hours whether the shoes are blue or pink at the decorations on the table. And I will tell you right now, Carol Lopez is with me right this minute. She was in that discussion. And to this day, we couldn't tell you what color those shoes were. But it was hours of discussion. But that's, those are the histories I think all of us have. Valerie, you have a question on the floor, Pat Anderson, Pat? But she's got to unmute herself. Yeah, Pat. Sorry, hon. There okay. you go. I just have a question about the bylaws. Let's say that you don't agree with all parts of a bylaw, you want to amend it. Can anyone do that or does it just have to be a board member? And how do they go about it? The bylaws belong to the club. Your bylaws should have uh, an area in it talking about how to amend them, how to make you know the changes you want to have made. Those have to be filed. As far as who can do it, I would say without even looking at your bylaws, and I'm afraid I know Pat's bylaws because <laughs> Pat is in my club. Um, they belong to the club. And I would hope if you are protecting the rights of the members, you're allowing them to make a, a change. You're allowing them to initiate the change and then following the steps, does it go to the parliamentarian and does she use a committee or what are your club's methods as it states in their bylaws? But if they belong, the, the bylaws as well as the money belong to the entire club. Thank you, Pat. Your, the next question comes from Catherine George Chu. Catherine? Hi, good afternoon, Madam Parliamentarian. Uh, my question has to do with um, staying on the agenda. And uh, a lot of times we bend over backwards um, trying to accommodate, um, uh, let's say, okay, so let's say there's a certain um, area on the agenda that is for reports of chairman or uh, something in that nature where we're hearing from the presidents from certain um, uh, clubs. And it's happened on Zoom, but it does happen in in-person meetings where someone is either unable to get a connection or we call for them and they're not there. And then maybe 20 minutes down on the agenda when we've moved on, they have they say, oh, well, I was trying to, or I couldn't, or I was late, or and is it at the president's discretion to then go back on the agenda? Where would you put that if we do have time at the end? Um, or can we just say, we'll submit your report um and and you know we're moving on how 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 do you deal with that i think again your intent on making sure that every member is heard um yeah we have snafus and i think with our electronic age we had more you know where you know I, I held all my bylaw meetings, uh, commission meetings on Zoom. We had days where things didn't go right. I think you've got to remember that what you want to do is make sure every member is heard, every member has a part. And if you've got to go back uh, on, well, the treasurer's report, she read the checks issued from two months ago instead of the correct one. You go back and you do it. Thank you, Catherine. The next question comes from Pat. Pat Borchard, is that correct? Oh, thank you, Madam Parliamentarian. My question is, 
related to committee meetings um, versus a general meeting, is it necessary that we have a parliamentarian present or appoint a parliamentarian pro tem? I don't think so. Stop to think about, you know, what what are you just what are you working on? Number one, if this project is something so big for the whole club, your committee is going to come back out and report correctly to the club. Um, I think you're going to have one very, very worn out parliamentarian. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next question comes from Janet Cooper. Janet? You're going to need to unmute, my love. You want me to ask? Do you need help? OK, let me give you a button. There you oh, go. Oh, there we are. Thank you, Valerie. I have a general question. Should our club try and match the state bylaws when practical? Your bylaws as a club cannot be in conflict with the state or with the uh, uh, general federation. That's the basic rule. How, no, I do not think you have to match them. First off, that's a lot of paperwork. Second off, it doesn't apply. You know, it's what your club needs in its bylaws. Sometimes in your bylaws, you also have things um, that pertain to the city you're working in. If you're using city facilities, if the city has rules on clubhouses and parking, um, things like that will relate just to your club, not to the district or to the uh, state. A, District parliamentarian, I hope, uh, has taken the has the advantage of seeing every uh, club's bylaws and can help them in case there are any areas of conflict. As a state parliamentarian, I have read all the district bylaws and make sure there's nothing in conflict. Now, what would be conflict? Um, we have no basis for membership. It, we cannot judge by sex, by gender, by um, ethnicity. There's no nothing, no no measurement for membership. So we have to remember, you know, that particular thing. Um, as far as matching, the format may match, but not the idea, not you know, how you're catering your club to the needs of your community and your membership. We have one more question on the floor. Pat, Pat Silver, you have a question? Thank you, Madam Parliamentarian. Uh, my question is about uh, quorums and what constitutes a majority when you're voting. Um, with COVID, we've been lucky to meet our quorum by our bylaws on Zoom meetings, but we're planning to resume in person. We live in Los Angeles, or I live in Los Angeles County, so that's kind of up for debate. We're planning to meet in October, but we're having to have a vote by mail, uh, and it's a big expenditure for our club. And uh, by Roberts, when I've read that, it's 51% voting for. But even when we voted by mail to approve the bylaw change to allow Zoom meetings and the electronic changes due to COVID, I had three people abstain. They didn't want to make a vote, yes or no. So how do I count abstentions? And do I count a majority? Would that require 51% of the total membership, 51% of the people that respond to my mail-in questionnaire. It, I'm, I've read Roberts and I just don't quite understand it. So that's kind of my confusion. And I'm sorry 
if other people aren't interested, I'm sorry to take up your time, but oh no, thank you. You know, there again, your quorum is stated in your bylaws. I would like to, you know, really caution people on being very careful when they set those quorums. Um, I like your club there. We had difficult time during this COVID year getting a quorum at our meetings because we have people who aren't very thrilled about being on Zoom. They don't have the cameras and the speakers and all this stuff that has been forced upon us. Um, so that makes that sets the difference right there. I um I, I think I would I would really look at setting those quorums so that it's not if you don't have a quorum, then it's 51%. But if you state something in your bylaws, either you know, realistic, you have uh, out of your 60 members, you have four of them that you know don't live in the area. They used to, and they still want to join. They want to receive the, the notices. But if you start in on this 51%, what do you do with those few that don't even live in the area? My own club has four ladies that are in some type of assisted facilities. They get the newsletter, but they don't want to, uh, uh, they can't come to the meeting or anything. You could see how you can really follow up your uh, counts by using them in the quorum. So think about the quorum and the adequate number of members and so many officers. Valerie, we have a question on the floor from Gloria, the Almeida district. Gloria? Yeah. You have to unmute, my love. Gloria? Thank Coming. you. Uh, Madam uh, Parliamentarian, uh, can we use uh, some kind of percent of those in attendance? Yeah. Do we say 45% of that or 50% or of that? Or what guideline shall we use? Because uh, I think fifty percent is pretty high. So forty percent, maybe. I would. I think fifty percent is just too much. Um, maybe you're, you. It, it's the fact that right now the way our lifestyles, it, it, we are. I, we're scared. You know, I hear somebody say in Los Angeles, I'm up in Alameda County, where you are. Um, things are changing about our opening. Are, are we going to reopen in a few weeks? And I think we're going to be, we have to be cautious of, of what you. we're doing. Thank you. We are good with the Zoom, but uh, we're thinking our... Uh, face-to-face -face meeting is the one that's we're going to have a problem with uh, attendance. So I, we we're thinking maybe face-to-face -face, uh, how, how what percent it is. Thank you, Gloria. Our next question or comment is from Debbie. Debbie? Actually, Gloria, uh, Valerie, this was a question that was in chat. Um, and I know how I would answer it, but I think you should answer it. And the question was, because <laughs> I could be wrong, but the question was, do the clubs have the right to refuse someone who wants to join the club? Probably the one document I don't have smack, sitting right smack in front of me. No, I don't think you have the right to refuse anybody to join the club. Um, I'm sorry, it's the way, it's the society we live in. I'm not sorry, because I don't believe um, that you have that right. If somebody wants to come to Dublin San Ramon tomorrow and they want to contribute their time in our community into our wonderful project, I have no choice. They come in. 
just pay me the $50, dude. Sorry. Thank you. That was that was my answer too. Uh, by the same token, you know, we don't, you know, exclude um, male people to come in. We've had some great uh, male members. We've had some great officers. When I was state president, there was a club president in the valley. Um, Hardworking guy. Uh, I just don't see how in this day and age we can, you know, be like that. We uh, have a question on the floor, Valerie. I apologize. I saw that chat come up. Um, yeah. We have a question on the floor from Corinne Burgess. Corinne? always takes me a second to unmute. Thank you again for taking my question. Uh, so anybody can join and that's wonderful. And then you have somebody join and um, then maybe there's issues. Uh, we recently added to our bylaws a code of conduct. Um, what do you do when you have somebody who might be maybe disrupting meetings or something that might not follow the collect um, that might be brought to the board's attention. I know, but you know, stop for a minute and realize, you know, what, what goes on in the state of California. Um, I think it's an extremely litigious society. I do not feel that there is any qualms about suing somebody or going after. And I'm sorry, within your group, I, I just think you have to deal with you know that person at that time, but I don't think, I do not feel a code of conduct works. Not if that person can turn around and, and, and term it as a discrimination. Thank you. We have several comments in the chat, Debbie. I see the one about the indemnity clause. I don't understand what that would do. If somebody could... Uh, yeah, I and I can't answer that, but let me um the what there was a question in the chat from Jean Marie Wilby. Is the minimum age to join 18? Is there a minimum age to join? You know, I uh, well, number one, I question that because I mean we do have a question, it's sitting in our bylaws right now from last convention, and that's the junior X who are, you know, junior high age, so that's under 18. And as it turns out, they do pay full dues. They pay district, they pay state, they pay GF. So they will have to be entitled to a vote. We had only given each club one vote. But if a member in good standing is because they pay their dues, those girls pay their dues. And it's with the advent of our brand new Hope Club that those young people, you know, brought it to our attention that they are full members. So yes, the, so no, the age of 18 doesn't count because you can be a junior X. And there are no other questions on the floor at this time. Debbie has a question. I was going to say, um, the person who put about the indemnity clause um, that said the bylaws should have an indemnity clause in them, I don't think you can put an indemnity clause in your bylaws. And then she puts it protects officers or members from liability. I think for that, what you might, if you feel it's necessary to put anything in your bylaws, it might be to say that the club will have 
insurance to cover liability for members and officers, um, and because that's really where the indemnity comes is you need indemnity insurance for that. Um, so you could put that requirement in the bylaws, but then you still have to buy the insurance. Yes. Um, that's, do you know, most of us have liability. Not everybody has directors and operators. Um, directors and officers. So, Wendy. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Valerie. Um, with respect to the insurance, that might be something that might be best put in the standing rules so that if things changed, it's easier to make a, a quick change to your standing rules for your club uh, and or district. So if, if it was up to me, that, uh, that language would go into the standing rules. Thank you, Wendy. It's like something like uh, your dues and your initiation always should be in your standing rules too because it's easy to change it that way. Um, we have a question fun. from Judy Pintaza. Judy? Okay, hi, Judy. It's not really a question. Um, I was in the parliamentary law class yesterday and we were talking about quorums. And the gentleman that was teaching the class yesterday said that basically these days we can't do necessarily a percentage anymore that we just have to do basically a number and we choose the number of that number of people that will reasonably come to a meeting and that we can count on at a meeting. Yes. Very smart. You know, you could stand there and say you want, you know, 35 of your 40 members, but you're not going to get it. And are you going to every month not be able to do that voting? So, you know, it, it, you've got to look at it realistically what you want to accomplish. And, you know, like I say, ladies, feed them and they'll come. So, <laughs> I am. Um, I'm very hopeful come this August, September, that we'll see us back together. I know that I'm looking, I really am looking forward to going to Georgia in, uh, in August and then our state board in um, September. And um, I think we gotta be excited and we gotta just get going and start working and start asking people to join us. Start inviting people to come in and, and perform great acts of service for your community. We have a question or comment on the floor from Barbie Heine. Barbie? Uh, on the same subject, is it considering the people that don't live in the area, could we, could we say active members? That is some way because I gave you the excuse, the thing of you know we have X number of people living in assisted living and maybe they can't get to the meeting. I think you got to take that into consideration. And ba basically, what it comes down to, you need that good club parliamentarian. You need a, maybe a, a parliamentary committee. Or you need to constantly talk to your members about the, the bylaws are theirs. Everything in that club is theirs. And they've got to mold it to where it fits your area best. You know, I live in a community that nothing can happen in city buildings from June to August because our schools use those buildings. So, you know, you've got to train your, you've got to adapt your, your club to the needs of your community. We have a question or comment on the floor with Carol Lopez, Lucy, Carol. I don't know oh. if I want a question from her. 
I was just going to, uh, since Valerie and I are in the same club, what we did when we reviewed our bylaws, we took into consideration what, what some of what Valerie is saying, that we took the people who didn't live in the area, we took the people who were at the night section that were not being able to come to our club meeting. And so we subtracted, subtracted those members, not, not getting rid of, but just subtracted the number from what we felt for was a bylaw uh, that would be more conductive that we could have a quorum. So we removed those, like we have 70 members and we deducted 15. So you felt your working relationship was, was lower. So that's another issue that you could just do that how we did it, it helps lower your quota that you need for your, uh, your quorum. So that was just my comment that we did that to help us meet that we'd have a quorum because we were having trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you get to a point where you have a three or four months worth of uh, minutes and you can't approve anything because you could never get enough people. Or we sat there in bated breath waiting for the 25th person to log on. Um, short of each, each one of us sitting with a cell phone making phone calls. But you know what it really comes down to? Just love for the organization and the ability to keep going, to keep being able to serve our communities, to, um, to understand that you've got a, an organization, the California Federation of Women's Clubs, that is forever looking at ways to make things easy, to make things run smooth, um, the example came, we just mentioned about the junior reps. You know, we were sailing right through on those bylaws and they're making up new sections and trying to make things streamlined so that they were easy to follow and didn't realize we said every place in there that those junior reps will only have one vote a club. And we just went right along without thinking that those girls do pay full dues. And it's just becoming aware, it's becoming, you know, what that, you know, I, I, I looked at like, uh, I just got this one, officer's job and description guides. Then we have another one that is just coming out for this September, uh, the art of leadership. And my alarm clock which I'd never set, I don't know what it wants. But uh, anyway, these are great publications that are easy to read, that are updated constantly. The leadership, the officer's guide was originally written during Carol Lopez's year and it's been redone, redirected. Um, it even told me what I was supposed to be as a parliamentarian. I have never read it before, see? Um, one thing to remember, as a parliamentarian, who really leads your clubs? Club president. Does the parliament, does the president ask the parliamentarian for an opinion? And that's what it is, is an opinion. Now, I jokingly always tell Pam, she put me in this job because it was the only place I could be and have to shut up. And she says she didn't do that, but I know she did. Um, I'm going to be a parliamentarian coming up in another uh, year for something else. And I know that person's doing it for the same reason. But that's true. Parliamentarians really sit on the side. We don't say anything. Um, sometimes at a board meeting, there might be a little bit of freedom. But at a general meeting, we don't really give our opinion on any issue. And if I am asked my opinion, it's the president that makes the final decision.
And that's important to remember when you're looking for that foreign material. And do I enjoy it? I have enjoyed it very, very much this year. This is a great team to work with. This um, our 10,000 members are something I love every one of and it's something that's really worth working with. So is there any other, any other fields you want to go into? One thing that came up this week in my own club, um, talking about some new members, and uh, you know, and you're you're trying to see what you're gonna, have, what needs you need have, and what you're gonna fill. And you see our new members, and you hope that you're putting enough information into their heads so that they know what our federation is all about. And what is our federation all about? It's the service we do to our community. It's the projects each one of us does that are unique to your club, to your community. Um, It, it's just moving along, making things in an even good manner. Marilyn, you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, it's regarding uh, nominating and election boards, uh, nominating committees. If, you, if there's a possibility that you're going to be running for an executive board position, can you also be on the nominating committee or is there a conflict of interest? Uh, according to uh, bylaws, I cannot see it. If you're running for office, you can be on that committee. Okay. Nothing stops you from being on a nominating committee. Um, if you are the club president, I don't care what, you don't go anywhere near the nominating committee. I would also really recommend that the parliamentarian does meet with the nominating committee to give them the rules. You know, make sure everybody's got the same set of rules. Uh, if your um, question, uh, if you become a candidate, must you resign? No. I have I have seen that, that going on, but um, okay. Thank you, Valerie. Okay. <laughs> Any other areas? Uh, you know, just I think the important thing is in in that parliamentary handout that you got. Training members so that they feel confident, protecting the rights of members, allow the minority as well as the majority, knowing that you have allowed everybody to stress their own opinion. If you don't, then I would suggest on your agenda, you put something like, the committee that met in the parking lot or the committee that met by telephone two hours after they all got home. Because it's really, you have to encourage the member, speak up now where we can all make a decision for the good of this club, for the good of our community. We have a question on the floor with Linda Coons. Linda? Yes, thank you. Um, Valerie, I have a question and I've tried to look it up. I'm sure it's in Robert someplace. When um, bylaws are referred back to the committee, okay, uh, when are when is the bylaw committee supposed to 
um, address the bylaws that are referred back to them? Well, number one, the bylaws should say how to do that. You know, when are they? Um, in other words, you presented bylaws and they didn't like them and they went back to committee. Exactly. Well, you've got a process. Um, uh, for instance, last convention, it was referred back about the junior X. So in our case, we won't come back to the state until the next convention, because bylaws are only, according to our rules, our bylaws are only handled at convention time. So it would be, Linda, what's in your, your club or your district? Okay, well, um, if the bylaws that were referred back to the committee, um, if they, if there's some action that needs to be taken care of that would affect uh, the bylaws before the convention, then how do you address that? I would, I would have to worry about that. It's got a state in there. Um, when it's referred back to committee, you're going to have to put some addition as to when it can be brought back out. I personally do not see it that way. I see it that it's got to go to the next convention. Uh, if I have a, another parliamentarian, I don't think I do. Carol, how about you? What do you think on that? Well, it would depend, I think, on your bylaws. Now, some clubs have it that you can only amend your <clears throat> bylaws at a convention. Yeah. Some clubs have it that you can amend, but, but you know, then you at any time, except you always have to notify the people yeah, in, in advance so that you know when you're going to vote upon it. So it would depend upon your bylaws. It but, depends on the bylaws. Right. But I, with Valerie, what she said, it's either convention or your bylaws have to state when you can do it. You just can't refer it back to committee and then bring it at the next meeting you can't do that you're you'd have to notify everybody but your bylaws has to state that when you're going to do it yep wendy we have um, a question from wendy thank you ladies um that absolutely you know if, if the bylaws are presented there's a question the president in my opinion needs to remind the committee when the how quickly they need to meet or if they need to meet before the next meeting, those kinds of things. I think the president has to understand that, you know, the time frame. And again, it's directed by your by your bylaws. Uh, our district bylaws a lot in my home district, our district bylaws um, allow our bylaws to be amended at any uh, conference and or the convention with respect to the particular notice. So we are able at the district to revise bylaws at, at, any, at any of the conferences or the convention. So that's four times a year. At the club, my home club states differently. You know, it, there's a prescribed time. So with respect to that, you have to go by what your bylaws say. It, and again, if that's not working for you, <laughs> if, if there's a situation, you need to be aware of that. And, and maybe that question needs to be uh, referred to the committee and, and set a time frame. So if you're the president, don't, sit there and say, gosh, I don't know when this needs to be done. When you have bylaws coming to the floor, this is my personal opinion. If you are the president, you need to have your P's and Q's in line. Thank, Thank you, you Wendy. ladies. You know, they're not just pieces of paper that we, we sometimes use or sometimes don't use. I am amazed when somebody says to me they can't find their bylaws. 
And I will tell you, I had that said to me last Thursday. Sorry, that, you know, not every club, I guess, has to have that folder. This was also one of the same clubs who said they don't want to print them in the uh, yearbook because it takes a lot of paper. It takes a lot of ink too, I guess. Our next question comes from Marilyn. Marilyn, you have a question or a comment? I have another question regarding elections. And um, I want to know, so there's the what makes good standing is the fact that they're do paying people or participants. Yes. So there's an election and the nominating committee sends out a flyer that was not up to par, didn't give all the information, but they contacted certain members and said, if you can't make it, we're gonna let you call in. And then on the election day, we find out about this and we are telling other people by the way, call in to do your vote. And the person in charge of that nominating committee said, absolutely not. We will not allow those people, even though they were in good standing to vote. They only allowed the ones that they wanted to vote. So I wanted to know, where is this coming from? Uh, I mean, what, what gives them the right to tell one member in good standing, no, you can't vote. And this one over here, yes, you can. Just call in if you can't make it. Thank you, Marilyn. Okay, um, in the state of California, we have, you must be present to vote. We have no absentee voting. As you can see through even with our um, voting on by Zoom and thanks to Debbie for really working with us to allow us to vote on certain things. You have to be sitting at the table to vote. We don't vote by mail. We don't, you know, we don't call in our vote. And that's against our bylaws. That's that's just the thing. And if as a club you would want to be the same way not to be in conflict. Um, I, I, I don't I don't realize of any other any club that can do that in the state because it's against the uh, our, it would be in conflict. Thank you, Valerie. I know what I need to do now. Thank you. I, I, I am to a point where I feel the success in the future of our organization is going to be, you know, coming on to us in a few weeks and we'll start to be able to, to reach out more. Um, make our club members aware that they do have bylaws, they do have guidelines. These aren't meant to close things down. These are meant to encourage involvement. Uh, everybody should be involved in all aspects of the club because it is your club. When you meet uh, is stated in your bylaws. But you just heard Carol make a comment about we have also a nighttime section. Well, we have a group of ladies who work all day. So they still want to give of themselves in our community. So we have this section that meets at night. Then there are those of us who hate to cook anyway. So we go to that nighttime section because that's a dinner we don't have to worry about. So we just cover more of the club life by doing it that way. It's the same way with groups that do meet at night and not for lunch. 
or those that meet for brunch on Saturday. We can allow any number of things because these bylaws are not built in concrete. I like to think bylaws are more like soft putty. You can mold them and fix them so that they fit this system. And we make it easy so that you can make those changes, but not so easy that you can just willy nilly make changes. You know, as a state, you elect your bylaw committee. You gave, you know, you had four people, one from every area. There are four very hardworking ladies. Those ladies this year met every single week. And I'm sure we're going to do it again once we start back up. And, um, and we're going to listen to everybody in the state to ask them what they see our bylaws needing. And I have several already that have, you know, officers and members that have written to me about changes they would like to see. And that's how we go. I can't think of everything, nor can my four team members think of everything. Valerie, you have a question on the floor. Bonnie, Bonnie, you have a question? I do. Um, you just raised the comment about having the flexibility for members to meet at different times in the evenings, especially for those that work, okay, and can't, can't come in the day. The comment that I've heard from uh, members uh, with regards to having something like that is the quorum, that there's a concern about quorum, and that if you do that, you've got to figure out how you handle your quorum, I'll call it in your I'll call it your regularly scheduled meeting. How do you, how do you handle that? Exactly what happened was the fact we had to adjust the quorum because we vote at our regular meeting and those ladies would never be there to vote. Right. That's why Carol made the comment, we reduced the count by the six, I think it was ladies that attend only the night. Okay, so you adjusted your- We adjusted um, our quorum into the, you know, when we worked on the bylaws, we did it. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a good idea. Okay, thank you. Any other, ready for any other comments? Um, I, th I think one of the things that you see in every book is the well done agenda. And I see a lot of people that are very afraid of putting together their first agenda. And number one, I should hope that the prior presiding officer is leaving you with an adequate number of reference materials and samples. Um, now, I do not mean that when you take office, they bring a biggie trailer truck to your house and unload. I've seen that happen. I sort of been in this club for uh, 55 years. And uh, I remember those times when Somebody drove up with a pickup truck and unloaded boxes after boxes. I'm still trying to figure out why somebody gave me eight years worth of data blanks. Did they think those years were coming back? I don't know. But uh, it is important that we are preserving what is needed to move on to the next year. When you give up this job that you currently have and you're, you know, it's time for a new thing, it's time to take on something else, I hope you're leaving that person with a good amount of tools 
there should be a list of or a, a thing of, of of the agendas so a sample that this new person knows it, we don't want to create this thing well well let's see her take over let's see how good she can do you're building in you know failure right there you're not willing to help move on when i gonna started this i was panicked but i had priscilla Bolander, bolander who was before me who was there with all the tools i needed and I'm going to be sure that I do the same thing for the next person. The same thing goes at club president. Are you making plans for the next club president? Same thing in the district. And I really, I, I really do hope that and maybe you'll all be complaining when the pickup truck got to your door with all the boxes, but I'm sure work together with your person who's following you and you're going to be fine. One thing to remember though, when you're giving up your job, make sure all the entities within your locale know about it. Like if your chamber members, if your city council people, all the people that are, you know, that deal with, that are call on the club, have the person that they're going to call. We want everybody to be successful. Linda? Oh, thank you, Valerie. Okay, I had a question and I forgot it before. Glad I just remembered it. I'm curious um, as to in our mission statement, um, we do say, of course, that we don't discriminate, um, and that would be for gender, religion, whatever. And um, it came up from state, I believe it might have been two years ago, the directive that um, the districts and clubs needed to uh, remove uh, anything in regards to saying like women, other than of course our club name, but to say if it says she, say shall or whatever, yet um, of course in the GFWC bylaws, they haven't um, taken any steps to that. And what I'm curious about is that if we already state this, which we have to uh, when we're first forming a club, uh, in our mission statement that we're not discriminating regardless of what it is, then why was this something that was brought up uh, by state to the clubs and districts in California that we needed to change that, yet GFWC still remains in throughout their bylaws of using like she or whatever. So I've just been wondering about that. I. I understand where you're coming from, and I don't know about GF. I uh, I guarantee you, come um, August, I will ask that. I'll do some research on my own, but um, we have done it in the state, and you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know how many people have worked on our state bylaws and removed every she. And yet there is maybe still one in there. I mean, I sat on a bylaw committee several administrations in the past, and I thought we removed every single one. And I found one this year. Uh, we have a comment or a question from Carol Lopez Lucy. Carol? Um, I'd just like to question in the chat one is that Shirley uh, is a who is a professional registered parliamentarian states that um, that if she, she become if the nominating person becomes a candidate, therefore she must resign from the committee. I'd like to she said I'd like to question that because I know she said she's a registered parliamentarian, but when did this go into effect? Yeah. 
Yes, we asked Shirley if she would raise her hand and give us the information in person. Shirley, would you like to address this? Here she is. Would you unmute, please? It's in Robert's Rules, and I just recently read it. I'd have to go back and search where I found it in order to give you an answer. Um, it's either in Robert's or it just came out in the uh, National Parliamentarian magazine. Well, that would be that would be helpful if we could get that information. Yeah. I'll see if I can find it and um, email it to somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. I would really appreciate that. And Shirley, if you want to put it into the CFWC communications, plural, at gmail.com, I can make sure Valerie gets it. Okay. And we want to welcome you to this forum. And you are welcome to say any of those comments that you put into chat. Just raise your hand and put it out there, my friend. Well, I, I don't want to infringe. <laughs> okay, so Carol, did you have any other comments? No, I'm just trying to lower my hand. Okay, my friend. I, I would like a cop. I'd like a copy of that as okay. well. Okay, we will. Uh, I'll get it to Valerie, and she can distribute it. All right. Our next question or comment comes from Wendy. Wendy, you have a question or a comment? Thank you, uh, Valerie. Um, your comments about uh, the president uh, being cognizant of the new president coming in. I, I think there's a very simple way to give a good handout, and that's called a procedure book. And, you know, son of a gun, they work. Um, that doesn't mean that the incoming president can't uh, read through that and go, well, I'd really like to try this. You know, that kind of a thing. But you at least have that. And did I miss here? Uh, is uh, the art of leadership going to be available in September? Or is that federation at a glance? Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. I thought this was the one that, uh, Tony, this is going to be available in September. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Okay, Tony, why don't you go ahead and unmute and tell us your question. There we go. Um, that it's going back to the um, nominating committee on the, the pages that was sent out for this meeting. Um, one of it says it's from Robert's Rules of Order. And of course, this is an old one, so but I don't see it changing a lot. Pages 419 to 421, and it goes uh, nominating by a committee, designation of a nominating committee, and then down to nominees. The second paragraph says members of the nominating committee are not barred from becoming nominees for office themselves. To make such a requirement would mean first that service on the nominating committee carries a penalty by depriving the member of one of their privileges. And second, that appointment or election to the nominating committee could be used to prevent a member from becoming a nominee. So, and like thank I said, you. I don't see it changing a lot. So thank, thank you. You. <laughs> you know, it's Putting your hand on an answer is half the trick. And uh, you know, if you call me and you ask a question, I can't give you an answer. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna have to take time and look it up. Or I'm probably gonna call three other parliamentarians. Vicki. We have a question or comment on the floor with Vicki. Vicki. Hi, Valerie, thank you. I have a question on, on agenda notification. We really don't notify our members of the agenda ahead of time. You mentioned Valerie putting it on the table um, so all members would have it, but I kind of fall back on the better government practice where they send out the agendas so people know what they're voting are and wonder what your thoughts are. Well. I first off believe that it is 
not great to your members when you don't give them a copy of the agenda. And I, as anybody who knows when they've ever been at a meeting and they put out two agendas to a table of 10, you will note that I usually get very upset. Um, your members deserve, deserve better than two, two copies on a table for eight or 10 people. They, you want them to be involved in your meeting. The best way to do it is to have the agenda there. Yes, if you can send it out electronically and it gets to, you know, a good many people ahead of time, that's probably better. But if you can't do that, I would have it on the table and that's how you encourage your people to come along and go along with the meeting. I, I, you know, you just are going to create a better atmosphere. We are all just far too busy to be wasting our time at a meeting that was not done well. We can't do that. It's just not fair to our members. They, they're not going to come back. And not only do we want them to come back, but we want them to bring more hands to the table. I mean, I don't know about the rest of you, but this is what it's all about, is to get all these hands to a table to do our acts of community service. And you want to do it in an organized manner and do it in something that invites people to keep coming back. Yes, Kathy. We have Kathy. Oh, oh. Kathy? Um, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um, if if the reason that people aren't providing um, agendas for enough for every member is because of the cost of printing. Uh, we just need to remind everybody about the discount card that we get through GFWC for Office Depot and Office Max. It's so affordable. I mean, it's I think it's three or four cents a copy for black and white. So cost shouldn't be a reason why you don't provide paperwork to your members. Just you know, my two cents. Kathy, thank you. I am I am one of those who and I'm sure Carol will chime in. She knows I won't leave the house to go run something off because I'll do it right here. All right. The only thing is I once about two weeks ago, I decided I've got to get out when he put club profiles and I'm going to get them copied. We had two stores named Office Map. I literally drove to both stores, once in San Ramon, once in Pleasanton, and they were leveled. Literally leveled, nothing, a cyclone fence around what was the building. So I did find out we do have a store in, still in Livermore, but it's just the idea that it is quite a savings. And I am sure we'll get either another Office Max or Office Depot and we'll get back again on it. But it is a good savings. And Linda Kuntz has a question or a comment. Linda? Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I've gone to, which I'm sure a lot of you have, several of our GF conventions and they have wonderful workshops. And I probably hold on to more stuff than I should, but there was, um, and I don't know if you'll be to see it or not, but it's called How to Begin when Wendy was talking about procedure books, how to begin a club procedure book. And it's like three pages stapled together here. I did pick it up at a GFWC convention and I'm sure state probably has even handed something out. It also refers to committee meetings, but how to begin a club procedure book and the things that um, need to be uh, included in that. And I definitely, definitely agree with 
Wendy, because um, I tried and I'm still going to be after them, our last year's chairman, uh, since there were some changes to please turn over a procedure book to our incoming chairman the second year of this administration for our district. And it really, really is very, very important. But it's, it's out there. Um, I'd be happy if anybody wants me to, I can scan this and I can send it to you. Just uh, put your email in the chat and I'll be happy to share this with anybody. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Our next question or comment comes from Wendy. I'd like to uh, change the subject just very slightly. Valerie, the comment you've been receiving about that the bylaws cost a lot of money to print, um, I'm going to show you, this is the size of my club yearbook. We recently went to a bigger font and we sold 16 pages in this book of ads printed in color for those people to help defray the cost. And guess what? I counted the number of pages in our bylaws, uh, in our yearbook that pertain to bylaws. Front to back, standing rules included, five pages, black and white. So if we can sell ads, we can print bylaws and standing rules. Thank you. I, I, this is my petard and I will probably, uh, you know, go down with the ship, but <laughs> thank you. Very good. Uh, we have a question or a comment from Vicki. Vicki? Hi, uh, this is going back to the com and a comment on the person who asked the question about difficult people in meetings and Valerie's comment was be wary of a lawsuit, which uh, I understand. However, having been at a meeting where difficult people were attending, uh, we did put in our standing rules, a meeting code of conduct and a meeting protocol that limited the time of speakers that for everybody. So there would be no discrimination it's laid out ahead of time. You know, everybody has two minutes. Nobody can speak before uh, a, a second time before somebody else has been speaking. Uh, the, the chairman is abiding by Robert's rules of order. And um, the comments should be on things that are on the agenda. And we did find that helpful as a reminder to members about civility and what protocols and meetings were for everybody to speak their mind and without being discriminatory. So I don't know in the situation the person brought up if that kind of thing would help, but it's a thought for out there. Thanks. Thank you, Vicki. You. you know, I've had, I've actually had the pleasure of being in a, in a club. I was started out as a junior, that junior club then molded into what is now my general club. Uh, it's been 55 years. I wish somebody, now Carol has been with me most of that time. I do not remember ever having that kind of a meeting. I am sorry, I have a decent memory. I know I'm old, but I would not be back at this club for 55 years. And I just do not remember a difficult person. Somebody had a bad day, that somebody might've been me. But to me, if, every, if I could leave a meeting and know that everybody who had something to say had the opportunity to say it or take part in it, then I can go to bed tonight knowing I did give everybody the opportunity. I really mean it. 
I do not remember a difficult meeting or a difficult person. Now, maybe that's just because Dublin is green and beautiful. But, you know, peaceful, yes. Do we have disagreements? Do we have to have votes? Do we have to have discussion? Yes, but I cannot ever remember going home from a meeting and saying I had a bad day. That's just the way it is. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 I love it, but that's maybe why I've been here 55 years. Anything else? Is Barb Barbara Riley Beard still with us? Yes, let's un, let's yes, go back I'm here. Okay, I'm let's here. go back to gallery and take off the spotlight. Thank you. Thank you, Beth Hilary. Oh my gosh. You are a wealth of information. And I don't know about anyone else, but I've got four pages of notes sitting right here. I always learn something, so thank you so very much. We're very appreciative. Um, does anyone else have anything for Valerie? Otherwise, thank you for being here. And next one up is going to be in August on the 3rd. We're going to do speaking and listening skills for all members on the levels of federation. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you for thank being you. here, ladies. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate that you are here today. And um, Sonia, do you have any last words to share? Sonia Matisse? You're muted. Okay. Yeah. Okay, with that, we're going to end our workshop. I'm gonna stop the recording. Uh -huh.